ceiling. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was in such a rush to finally get going that I had this. The camera's facing the wrong way. Anyway. Uh, sorry that I was a little bit late tonight, you guys. Um, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I have one, two, three, four boxes to open up. Uh, yeah, in the last, like, the summer sale, the Knit Picks Big Sale stuff, I guess it wasn't the big sale, but in the Knit Picks Sale, I placed a lot of orders. I got a lot of berry yarn, which is good for everybody because it means a lot of videos coming through the pipeline. And then in addition to that, um, I always like to do unboxings because then we can chat and I can answer questions and I can share some of the fun yarns and stuff with you. But today I also had a box, this big one down here, show up from Dharma Trading Company, um, which is a big supplier of a lot of different types of dyes and dyeable type items. So I'm not an affiliate or anything there, but I am a Knit Picks affiliate. But all of the stuff that I unbox and show is stuff that I paid for myself. I don't get any like additional discounts, but I do make some commissions off of referrals. Um, so yeah, the, uh, so there, yeah, that's the way that that works. But if you are interested in any of the Knit Picks products, that you see me see today. You can find my link in the video description and I drop it in the chat occasionally. So there's that. Um, yeah, Kemet's Creations, my Etsy store is doing pretty well. Um, I saw that a few more of my lovelies I will be shipping out um, probably tomorrow, which uh, I'm excited about. And actually in terms of announcements, um, currently, I'm not sure if all of you are aware, but I'm doing a I'm collecting pre-orders for a Hanukkah sampler, um, which during Hanukkah 2018, uh, you can get a box with wrapped up eight mini skeins for the eight nights of Hanukkah. And then each night when you unwrap the mini skein, you can then watch the dyeing video where I dyed that yarn. So every night I will be releasing a new dyeing video. Technically, I guess there'll be a ninth bonus dyeing video at the end because you can add on a full skein of yarn, but um, that, it, the shop is Chemnitz Creations on Etsy. There's a link to the shop in the video description and I think that it's up in a featured listing. But so that's something really, really cool and special that I have going on now. And I tried to have some like smaller mini skeins so that way there's a more affordable option. Um, but um, no, the, the, the Hanukkah sampler, actually, it's also going to feature eight different yarn bases. So there's like a lot of eights going on. It's, it will be eight dyeing techniques, um, not eight types of dye or anything, but eight different overall techniques, eight yarn bases, and some of them are ones that I've never used before. And, um, and there are more luxury yarn bases. So the yarn bases include alpaca, silk, cashmere, um, and maybe some other fiber types as well. If you have allergies, reach out to me um, and like we can, we can see what, what I could do. Um, I mean, if it's a wool allergy, there's not a lot I can do. <laughs> but everything is gonna be um, wool based. So I think, at, at, well, there might be something that's like 100% something else, but it's all protein fiber based, um, so. Um, suggestions for what the mini skein should be used for? Uh, no, I was thinking about that. And this year I didn't come up with like a project or something to, to put them, to put them in together. Um, so I don't currently have a suggestion. I'm probably going to work on something at some point on what they could all be used for. Um, but there is an option to add a limited edition colorway um, to your sampler box. Um, and so that way you can get something that will definitely be enough to make something. But the mini skeins, you can choose between either five grams, gram sets or 10 gram sets. Um, so that way, you know, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that some of mine might turn into hexi puffs for that remnant blanket. Um, I've got all kinds of washable and non-washable fibers in mine, so it works for that. But um, I might, well, that's what I tend to do with mini skeins in general, but 
um, for this. Yeah, I'm excited. And you don't have to be Jewish to participate. I'm Jewish. That's why I'm doing Hanukkah. But I am inviting everybody to celebrate with me. And because of people asked when I announced that, um, I'm probably going to... I'm not planning a dying live stream during this period of time, but I might either come on live to show you guys like my candles and decorations or something, or film like a little snippet to share a little bit of the way that my family celebrates the holidays. So um, I thought that that would be, that would be fun. Cause, oops, I'm not in the thing. Yeah, click, yeah, if you guys are in, in like Chemnitz, subscribe to the channel, click the like button on the video. And you know, you can go and like my shop and stuff as well. That is always nice. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? My packing slip. Yes, yeah, so Nitpicks had a 20% off sale. And I went a little bigger than I normally go because there's some yarn bases that I know I use a lot and they do a 15% off coupon every once in a while, 20%. The last time I remember that, they did that in December, like maybe towards the end of December, and they did that for um, the very big sale, like on Black Friday week. Otherwise, it doesn't come around that often, so I try to take advantage. We've got the, we've seen this one before, the Happiest is Handmade card. And I can say, and I can vouch for the customer service at Nitpicks. Um, if I've ever had a problem, once there was something missing from my box and they just shipped it back, um, no problem. So, uh, oh, oh, and don't forget those super chats. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, oh, okay. I. You know, I don't think I'd get all of the comments up on my phone, and so that's why I was confused. I didn't see them. Um, oh, thanks, Joanne. Um, okay, so in this box, I have 20 skeins of Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. If you've watched my videos, you know that this is one that I really, really love. It is the 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It is my, my go-to sock yarn. And I use it, oh wait, except I was not holding up. Did you guys even notice? I was not holding up two bags of stroll. I was holding up one bag of stroll and one bag of Hawthorne. That's right. I went all in and got a 20 pack of Hawthorne. I am in love with this yarn base. Okay, so stroll is my standard. It's a bit loftier. It doesn't have as tight of a twist as Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Now, even though I have unopened ones upstairs, I'm opening these up so I can show the difference. Um, Hawthorne is 80% superwash wool, 20% uh, polyamid, and it's got a tighter twist, which means that there's, so this one is Hawthorne and this one is Stroll. This one is Stroll over here. So I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see. But there's a little more definition in the plies with the Hawthorne. When you look at it, it's two ply. You can kind of see, see that it's a little more rustic, but it's still nice and soft. Um, and it has a really nice, it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Not shimmer, but it it's a little bit shinier maybe than the, eh, maybe not. I don't know if it's shinier, meh. Um, but it takes up dye like a dream. Um, and it seems to have a little more punch to it not because of the way it takes up dye but i think the way that the twist goes it just adds like another layer to the colors and so even though the yarn bases are really similar um even though the yarn bases are really similar you still can like there's enough of a difference that it's fun to play with both um but yeah i am a huge fan and so i decided to um get a whole bag um, let's see. Uh oh. Um, you have Hawthorne and you should have your two boxes. Woohoo! Um, yeah, uh, all right. 
You guys, the chat is going fast tonight, so I can't even follow. Okay, so that was the first, the first box that I opened. This guy is now empty. See, that was a fast one. Um, let's see what's in box number two. And honestly, oh, this might be the exciting one. Oh well, I guess this the die one is probably the exciting one of the night. All right, so let's see. Ah, so I got a new pair of needles. This is a 40 inch size one, 2.25 millimeter. Um, and it is the Wooden Majestic. I don't think I have any wooden needles that are this small. Um, I will have wooden interchangeables and those go down, I think, to size four. And I have size threes. Um, oh, don't, don't, derail, don't worry about derailing the chat. I don't mind at all. I just was getting a little distracted. <laughs> it's not a problem. I love it when the chat is really active. It's really, really great. Um, and it helps me out too, actually. Um, but I, I have it in the stainless or whatever the metal one was, but I was just, I was thinking about starting to, oh, although it feels like I could snap this. Um, I want to start knitting some socks because I have some yarns that I've kept that would be perfect for some socks. And I had some size forties that I guess were size one and a half. So the two and a half millimeter. I decided I might want to start, I check gauge and have a set of the slightly smaller ones. And since I could get them 20% off, it was a good time to buy it. And so this is the very Rebecca colorway needles. It's like the blue, teal, and purple. Um, I just, I love the way that yarn feels on wooden needles so much more than metal. Um, I, I just, it, it's like butter sliding across. It is so soft. Um, and no squeaking. Um, I just am a huge fan. And I do know, like, if, I mean, if I were to leave them someplace and step on them and it be my fault totally and they snapped, then that would be on me. But if they snapped from, like, user error or something, Knitfix would replace them. I had, like, a fault in a needle once and they, like, like no questions asked, sent me in another one. So it was great. Um, I am, yes, they're lightweight. I, I, I love the cables that they have. So that was a little prezzy. Hey, where's my, <laughs> I just dumped it all over the floor. Okay. Um, here's my packing slip. I had one box recently that didn't have a packing slip, so I had to like track it down online. Um, yeah, okay, so I've got the same cards. Sometimes they mix it up in some of the packages. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, all right, right here. This, and I know everything is backwards for you guys, but this is Paragon. So Paragon is 50% Merino, 25% Baby Alapaca, and 25% Mulberry Silk. Now this yarn has a shine. I don't know if it shows up to you guys, but it, Glistens, it is sport weight. I think it's, is it just two ply? Yeah, it's two ply, but it, there's some twist to it. So there's some bounce. It's actually similar looking, except for the additional shine to the Hawthorne in the way that it's a little bit more rustic in the spin, but it's got a very, very fine fiber content. So it's very, very soft. I've only dyed with this once and I now have three things of it right here so more of that will be coming up in the future and then i have you've been using the looms to knit things oh <laughs> yeah all right and so i have four skeins um yes that has really really nice drape um, the Hawthorne has really good drape too. I haven't tried using Hawthorne for any kind of, sh I haven't knit with it yet, actually. Um, I have used the Stroll for shawls, um, and I've liked that fine. Um, but this is Knit Picks. So now I've got four, four hanks of Knit Picks bare hair. These are 50 gram hanks. 
80% wool, 20% angora. And these are very, very soft, but also like it feels, it's got a different feel to it from like, you know, alpaca or something. It definitely feels like, it feels nice. Um, did I get the, lumin the luminance? I, I have actually um, some of that upstairs. Um, I did not buy more of it. The, I'm a little intimidated by it actually. And I'm not, the reason why I'm intimidated by it is more the price point than anything else. I definitely plan to dye it at some point, but for now I've been experimenting with like a hundred percent silk in terms of like scarves and stuff that are cheaper just to get a feel of what I might want to do with it. Um, and well, I might have some more silk scarves in here. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, one of the, not to give spoilers with, like, what any of the yarn bases will, that will be in the Hanukkah thing, but one of the nice things about it is that since I'm going to be using eight different um, yarn bases, and I won't, like, I don't use in the, in my Etsy store, the names of the yarn lines and nitpicks, but in my videos, I always say what the yarn is that I used. Um, but it's a way that you will basically get a sampler of eight different bases so that you'll be able to feel it and see how it feels. So it's um, in, a, in one kind of way, like a sampler of, I think everything I'm doing is probably from the picks. Um, oh, well, so, so yes, silk hankies for spinning are definitely fun to play with. I've got, I have a couple dyeing videos of those, but I'm talking more about, um, yeah, right in here, I've just got some silk scarves. Um, so they're woven pieces of fabric. Um, you got some bare hair coming too? Okay, what else do I have in here? Oh, I've got some, okay, I've got three skeins of gloss fingering. This one, I'm close to wanting to buy a 20 pack. Unfortunately, a lot of the nitpicks prices increased recently. And I don't know if it's because they're offering more sales and so therefore they increase prices so then they can keep having sales or if um, it's possible also that their supplier costs went up because I know that across the board um, bear yarn a lot of places suppliers have had to raise prices recently um, but this was because they had the big summer sale so I think this was on sale and then there was a 20% off so that's why I was trying to take advantage of some of these discounts um, I didn't buy any more of some of the new Bear Yarn lines that they released, even though I love some of them a lot. Um, I think that maybe just because none of them were on extra sale yet. And so, um, yeah, but I'm really excited. I think soon I'm going to have to try that, like, Merino Boucle one. But anyway, I'm digressing. Okay, so this is gloss fingering. Oh, it's 30% silk, 70% Merino. It's soft. It's shiny. It takes up dye like a dream. Um, I most recently used it in the Dye Pot PS number three. Um, and that yarn was, was beautiful. And I loved how it turned out. And now I've got one, two, three, four. Uh oh. Oh no, I've got five. Okay, that's how many I was supposed to have, I think. I've got five balls, and this one is not a bear yarn. So the affiliate link, which again, I'm going to drop in, that I'm dropping in will direct you to the page that has all of the Knit Picks Bear Yarns. You can even on this, through this link on the page, see ones that are out of stock. Um, when you click on it, it'll then tell you it's out of stock, but um, that'll give you the complete list of bear yarns. Because if something's out of stock and you search for it, it won't show up in search. And I think some of the new Barry Yarn lines don't show up in search yet either. Because if you search for Boucle, nothing comes up. But anyway, I have five balls of Alux, which is 66% Baby Alpaca, 33% Lurex. And this isn't a Barry Yarn. I got the colorway cream, which because of the silvery Lurex in it, looks more like a pale gray. I mean, the color, the color looks kind of silver. Welcome! And it's really soft. And I've only ever dyed something with sort of a shimmer once. And this has a lot more shimmer. So I'm curious and really want to play with it. So I got some to play with. 
Yeah, so that was the most varied box. And I don't even know how much I spent. <laughs> At least I know, like, it's all gonna, like, be used. But I have trouble not making purchases during their sales. Because I know, oh, I'm always gonna need more of Stroll or of Wool of the Andes or something. Or this next one. And, um, okay, I now need to look. Because if this is still showing up at this discount, okay. So I send a pick recently raised the prices. When you go and you buy a bulk twenty pack, you usually get fifteen percent off the list price. So when I purchased these ones I'm showing today, I got an additional twenty percent off, which was great. For some reason, the 20 pack of Swish DK is showing up as 33% off. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's a mistake, but I've ordered it twice. So clearly it's intentional because I think if it were some kind of pricing error, they would have caught it and fixed it. Um, but. At first I was like, oh, I don't want to like advertise that it's a glitch or something, but I mean, so I, I ordered, even though I have a lot of extra swish in the house, I think that now, because this box, did I get this with the, oh, I didn't even get that with the 20% off. I got it with the $20 um, dollars off coupon, but I have, <laughs> 20 more skeins of Swish. I told you I had about 80 skeins of bear yarn that just showed up. Have you ever tried Bear Felici? I have, and I was so mad that it was unavailable when this coupon code was available because then I would have picked up probably 10. Um, and now Bear Felici is back in stock, and um, but it's I'm like now waiting for a coupon code. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I was waiting for it to come back, and so we'll see. Um, if I did not just order 80 skeins of yarn, I would have paid for it and bought it full price because I'd been waiting for it to come back, but I need to make sure I have space to put all of this. So I guess I can plug, yes, if you want to help me make more space for more yarn, go to the Chemnitz Creations shop. Um, all the yarn there has been featured in past or upcoming dyeing videos. And... Um, or if it hasn't been, it's very clear if it's, um, if it hasn't been, if it wasn't filmed directly in a video, I either mention the video that is similar, um, or something like that, but I make it clear if it wasn't filmed, died on camera. Um, cause I believe that there's a handful like that now. Um, yeah, but the, the Bear Felici, I used it in the, um, breaking a uh, great Kool-Aid video. I think was the one time that I've used that so far. Okay, let's open up my Dharma box. <laughs> when I was a grad student, I'm sorry, I know I'm blocking the camera right now. Um, when I was a grad student, I ran the stock room. And so I did like a lot of opening of boxes and stuff. Okay, I can move this now. Eek. Aw, man! Peanuts. I hate packing peanuts. They get everywhere. I wish I had... Oh. Oh, bummer! Hi, guys! <laughs> Alright. Let's repurpose some of this stuff. Yeah, so Dharma sent out a message, kind of like a heads up that, and I'm not trying to get political or anything, but they just kind of gave a notice that due to um, some tariffs um, and stuff that they were going to probably have to raise, uh, I guess I might wait and get it there. They might have to raise some of their prices. So I decided I should place an order. Hopefully, the other parts of these are in there. 
So one thing that I got, I got a lot of squeeze bottles. Maybe this is the, nope, what's this? Oh, this is the Jacquard Dye Fixative. Ha. So, you know how I did a video on the Rit Color Fixative and I was like, oh, I'm unsure if this makes a difference. Some people have told me it does make a difference with red and pink, and I've been meaning to repeat that. But I decided that when I realized that Jacquard had a fixative to use with their eye dye for natural fabrics, that maybe I should get one and um, try it out before when I try to eye dye. So that's something on my list at some point. Um, all right, so let's see. So the other stuff, well, these are big. So I've got some Dharma acid dyes and some Dharma fiber reactive dyes. Um, so let's see what colors I've got here. I've got fire engine. These are the acid dyes. Fire engine red, tangelo, uh, twilight gray, brilliant yellow, cherry bomb, silver gray, uh, dark navy, toner black, Emerald green, deep purple, fluorescent fuchsia, delphinium blue, which I picked purely because I like delphinium blue in food coloring, uh, frozen, true black, fluorescent safety orange, uh, intense iris, peacock blue, espresso bean, Okay, I already said this. Okay, I think that that might be it for the... Oh gosh, it's already getting everywhere. For the fiber, or sorry, for the acid dyes. Now for the fiber reactive dyes, I got the color Nightshade, which I think is like a deep, 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 like blue purple kind of color. I got Raven, which is one of their blacks. They have a few different blacks and some of them break a little differently and whatnot. I got grape and turquoise, which the turquoise I think can be a little trickier to dissolve. Um, so there's that. But I got, oh, okay. Um, ah, here are one, two, three, four, five. Do these have different size openings? They do have different size openings. I think that I got 16 and 32 ounce squeeze bottles. Not that. This feels, I guess it can squeeze. It's just I realized once, because I was thinking I was using my four, the tulip tie-dye kits come with four ounce squeeze bottles. And four ounces can be a lot or can also be not very much. And so I realized that I was wishing for a bigger bottle that I could squeeze out of. So let's see, how many of each of these did I get? Is this my packing slip? <laughs> um... So I got six 32 ounce. Oh, I guess I got six of each. One, two, okay. So there should be another thing of, I'm gonna be drowning in bottles. Oh, well, these at least can go live in the shed. I've got a shed that isn't temperature regulated or anything. Um, I mean, I understand why they had to put peanuts in, but hopefully, ugh. So it's really staticky, which is funny because it's humid, but I hope that none of this packing stuff got into the bottles. I'm not a huge fan of there being excess plastic, and you certainly shouldn't need to put like a plastic bottle in a plastic bag, but I kind of wish that, given that these now have all this like packing debris on it, I sort of wish that there was something. Can I explain the difference between fiber reactive and acid dyes? Yes, absolutely. So acid dyes um, are and actually food coloring that functions as a type of acid dye. But acid dyes work on protein-based fibers um, and they inter and the way that you use them to dye fiber and fabric is in acidic conditions, which is why they're named that way. And they don't form a chemical, like a still an interruption. They don't form a chemical bond with the fibers. So it doesn't become one molecule. 
but these acid dyes will interact with the protein fibers through a combination of ionic bonds, which are charge charge bonds, um, hydrogen bonding, and probably some van der Waals forces. And so it's still a very, very strong interaction, but it is one that can be disrupted, which is why if you use hot water, like super hot water, you might get some more bleeding, even on something that didn't bleed before. And so that's why people recommend to wash things dyed with acid dyes on kulp. Fiber reactive dyes, um, which is frequently used for tie dye, works a little differently. And I'm not sure of the exact mechanism, but I do know that they will react with the fibers and you'll actually form a covalent bond. And the difference there is, I guess the difference between like soup and eat, this is like not the best example, but, but between soup, gluing something to your fridge and putting a magnet on your fridge. One of them, you know, it's like with a really strong magnet, it could be hard to pull off, but um, it's still like, you know, is it could be on there very sturdily, but it can be disrupted. You can disrupt a covalent bond, but it's harder and maybe not exactly in the same place. And so it can be a little stronger. Um, Oh no, it's not in sync. Oh gosh, that must mean my internet is being, mm, sorry guys. Um, sometimes I try to like take everything as off as I can. And, oh, I'm like watching the feed to see if I can see if I'm off sync, but I can't hear the feed, so. Um, okay, it's good, that's great. Um, oh, here's the rest of the, the caps. But yeah, so that's the main difference between the acid dyes and the fiber reactive dyes. And so fiber, active, fiber reactive dyes you can use on wool as well, but you can also use them with cotton. And so I think that due to the ease of use, um, people, a lot of people choose to use acid dyes with yarns and stuff, and then the fiber reactive, but I think it's like a personal preference kind of thing. Okay, oh, that's like my stuff. What is this? Oh. They sent me... There's a new hammer tea. Oh, Gildan has a new... Oh, they sent me some information with some inks. Oh, yeah, they now have... This is cool. Um, I saw on their website, they sell like these blank like canvas things. So you could tie dye your own like buntings for a party, which you know is something that I am interested in. Okay. I have another dust mask. At some point I might get a full on like respirator just because I think it would be cheaper. I mean, these are only a couple bucks and it could be cheaper to like change out the filters. Um, but when using powders, and I actually even use these with Kool-Aid now because I do enough dyeing that you just don't want to inhale any particles. Like, you don't want to, like, sand isn't f usually fine enough that it's a concern, but you don't want to inhale anything, even if it's, you know, otherwise, like, ingestible. Um, so... Yeah, and so the... I was nervous about acid dyes because they're like, oh, you have to be really, really careful. But I think that it's common sense and like the tie-dye kits come with powder technically you should wear you know use personal safety equipment when you're dealing with any kind of powder um a lot of different powders are irritants and whatnot so all right another bottle i actually kept myself from there's some other types of dye that i was really interested in but i have three of the dharma acid dyes in my stash but i haven't um, oh, played with them yet. Okay. Speaking of the Dharma acid dyes. So there's one, I have one complaint with Dharma acid dyes. They're fiber reactive dyes. They have arranged on their website in color order. So you see like all of the purples, like just sort of rather than being some other kind of random order, you see all the purples in a section. So you can kind of, I mean, monitors vary, but you can kind of get a sense of like, okay, this is a like 
more blue than that one. And so at least you can get some relation between them as you're picking things out. I decided to go ahead and buy, um, what do you think is the best idea to use with cotton that won't wash out? Um, have I seen the new Jacquard marbling dice? No, but I did get a tulip marbling kit from the store the other day. Um, so I think that, so the problem with fiber reactive dyes is that when you mix them with water, they can technically react with the water, which just means that then you have some unbound dye particle that, um, you know, is, that needs to be rinsed out. Um, so the best side to work with cotton that won't wash out. I mean, I've been very happy with some of the tulip tie dye dyes. Um, I think that some like, you know, the Jacquard fiber reactive dyes and the Dharma fiber reactive dyes might be like, they're a more professional quality than some of the one step dyes that I've used a lot. But um, like the shirts, I did a tie dye video recently with the shirts I dyed my kids and you know, now that it's at the point where after three or four washes, I just toss them in the wash with everything and they stay the same bright colors that they were before. So, um, I think that as long as you pre-wash it, I think it should be fine. But anyway, I got a poster of all of the Dharma colors. And the reason why I bought the poster is because this has all of the colors um, it has all of the colors with, um, all of the colors just here. And so now, since I can have them next to each other, it's a little easier to see, okay, duckling is like, is softer than sunflower yellow, but they are super, super close. Brilliant yellow is really bright. Fluorescent lemon is a cooler tone yellow. Um, you know, and just looking at this, I can make these comparisons, even with the colors far apart. Now, I'm not going to keep this as a poster, even though I wish, I wish I could take it and go make a photocopy of it, but I don't know if that's kosher. Um, but I saw something that, uh, Little Bean Loves Yarn does, and I'm not sure if she took one of the posters or if she made the labels herself, but she actually will take her dye jars, cut a piece of the color on top with the dye name. And I think that's brilliant because if you have all of them in a box, you can then see looking at the lid what the colors are. Um, it also then means that if you have multiple open you know which lid goes to which container so you don't accidentally contaminate your dyes. Um, but I think that it's handy so then you can look at the shades and you don't have to think like, okay, I have to remember that Fire Engine Red, which is sort of, it's more, I mean right now maybe because of the lights yellow, but it feels way more pink. Like Chinese Red and Oxblood maybe is a little orangey, but Chinese red looks more red to me. Right now the fire engine red looks a little um, pink. Um, but I'll, I mean, I'll have to see. I'll have to try them out. So, yeah, I am excited. I'm a little intimidated by the volume of dye that I have here because I still haven't gotten through. I made, what, six stock <clears throat> solutions uh, when I first started using acid dyes. I'm just starting to finish some of those, and so I haven't even used up the half ounce jars of that yet, but I, I'm excited to play with this. Um, do the colors on the chart compare with the actual dyed colors? I would imagine so, um, given that that's the point of buying, buying this. Um, I mean, there is, you. I would expect that they would have tested the printing of this poster so that it would correspond to what the colors are. Now, I think that to get the color that you see on the chart, um, and they say this on their website, that you have to use between maybe like a 2% on weight of goods of the dye to your yarn. So for 100 grams of, um, yeah, you, that you would want a, like a one or 2% on weight of goods. 
But for some of them, like black and navy, you might want um, you might want four percent. So, but then of course you can get, you know, if you use a little more or a little less. I mean, there's a limit to how much yarn can absorb. But yeah, and then of course you can mix things, and so there's a lot of a lot of options. Yeah. Bye. Um, oh, you just, yeah. Yay! I'm glad. I'm glad you're excited about that. Hi, welcome. I'm glad you were able to join. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be able to look at this. Um, oh yeah, so it says note. Most of these colors were obtained on, on silk by dyeing between one and a half and two percent of weight of goods. OWG. If color has an asterisk, use four percent. And so you know, the color on silk, I think silk might require a little bit more dye than wool, just like cotton requires a little more dye than wool to get the same like color. So for like indigo, um, like the cotton's lighted more. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see. More bottles. Have I found them all yet? I wish, I'm gonna show you guys my, like down my feet my collection of all the stuff. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's all the bottles. Packing clips over here. Aha! Soda Ash Fixer. So this is to use with the fiber reactive dyes. Um, and it, yeah, you, like, I think the one step tie dyes, they must have some kind of soda ash or something to make it basic in the bottles. Um, so unlike uh, unlike wools, which you dye in acidic conditions a lot of times with acid dyes, with um, cottons you would use um, soda ash. Now some fiber reactive dyes do tell you to use acid or to use vinegar or citric acid when you're dyeing wool. So I would always check with the manufacturer's instructions on that. And so now, huh. What do I have here? What do I also have? Oh, maybe I already have some. Okay, so I got something. This is Globber salt. And I believe, blah, 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 blah. I forget what I got. I think that this could be a, and now I'm forgetting exactly, but I think it could be a leveling agent. Um, I think it's basically, so it's sodium sulfate. I think that some salts you can use. Um, there's some dyes that will react with fiber super, super, super fast, which makes it really, really hard to get an even color. Think red number three. You can add it to cool yarn, sometimes with no acid, and it just sticks where it goes, which is really fun when you want to take advantage of it, but if you want to get something more solid, you need to slow down the rate that the dye will absorb to whatever it is you're dyeing. And so there's some different, I don't remember if I got this for a solubility reason or what, I haven't, obviously I haven't used it before. For some reason I decided that I wanted to buy it. Um, but there are some other compound, salt compounds out there that you can get that you can use um, to help, um, help things uh, absorb better. But maybe, maybe I got it also because the, there's some note on the, with the fiber reactive dyes with the turquoise, which is the reason why I got it. Yeah, so I, I don't remember. I just remember feeling like, hey, I haven't ever seen this anywhere else. So let's get it. Okay, what's in here? So it's more packing peanuts. I think this might be my, my silk. I think I got two different sizes, but these are small. They're a little small to use for anything. I think you could, like, they're just not, you know, a little too small to use as like a, um, as a, like as a headband. I mean, you could like, you know, <laughs> use it and wear it, but I mainly got these just because that's, an affordable form of 100% silk to play with with dyeing. 
Now, granted, this woven fabric might take up dye differently than, you know, silk yarn that might not be spun as tightly because you have little, little threads going into this. But it's still something to play with and see. And I got some bigger ones, too. Let's see how big these ended up. Oh, okay, these ones are larger. That gives more space to play. And you know, this you could definitely use as like a headband or something. Uh, but anyway, I decided that having some inexpensive silks to dye would be helpful. Um, Cause I've only used, I bought some other ones. I've only used them a handful of times, but that's, I think I dyed silk hankies before, but um, yeah, I'm excited to, I don't really want to put those back and I'm irritated by the peanuts. Okay. I'm going to set this back here. So I don't want to get the peanut dust all over it. Uh, what types of things have you not used to dye silk? What do you want to use for dyeing silk? So, so far I have used food coloring. I've dyed the silk hankies that you can use for spinning with food coloring a handful of times now. Um, with these silk scarves, I used one with tie dye and I used it, that was the first, um, because I used to always love the effects that I would get on paper towels when I would rub them on my work surface. And so I took a silk scarf and I just rubbed it to clean up. And unfortunately the silk scarves aren't super absorbent. So it didn't quite give the same effect um, that the paper towels did, but I still got something that looked pretty cool. So I've tried that once with tie dye. I'd like to try them with commercial acid dyes and yeah, I've got a bunch of other stuff that would be fun to try on them. All right. But speaking of, so I have lots of cotton yarn, but and cotton yarn is really easy to get, but sometimes it's sort of fun to play with fabric. And some of you might know that I have been playing around with indigo and I had some issues with an indigo vat and then I got it working. Those videos are all going to be coming soon. But I decided to get some cotton bandanas. Um, you know, nice bandana size. Yeah! <laughs> you know, I could tie it around. Um, but I got some of these to dye with. So I thought it would be fun to play with some shibori techniques and some other types of tying techniques. And again, sometimes when I'm going to be like playing around with a lot of something, it's nice to have something that's less expensive to play with. So to play with a piece of fabric before trying, I mean, not that t-shirts are expensive, but I wanted something woven instead of knit. So to try it with this before trying, you know, a pillowcase or a bag or something like that. Hi, welcome. Oh, uh, what did you miss? A lot. I have just opened up four boxes. Um, let me see if I can, and this one had all the packing peanuts, which drove me bonkers, but let me see if I can show you guys let me okay. so i've got over 80 skeins of bare yarn that i opened up got a new pair of knitting needles some size ones for socks uh, i got a bunch of squeeze bottles a lot of acid dyes and some fiber reactive dyes um and yeah that's basically it oh a new a new mask yeah i i got <laughs> A lot. <laughs> I mean, nitpicks, nitpicks was having a really big sale. And so I know that I need it. I need the materials. I know that I'll use it. And so I needed to take advantage of it. So yeah, so now I might have to put like a restriction on myself. Not in terms of just the amount, <laughs> the dollar amount. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am a nitpicks affiliate. I do get commissions when I refer a sale. I don't get commissions off my own sales. 
and I do pay for everything that I bring in. So I get the, you know, the same discounts that all of you might get. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the not just because of the dollar amount. I mean, it's an investment in my business to to buy these things. So that's not as much the the thing. It's more of a space problem. I need to have a spot to put all this. <laughs> So that's gonna be hard. Oh no, did it get blurry? Um, try sh checking the resolution. I see it coming through. Um, I see it coming through okay on my feed. But speaking of my relationship with Knit Picks, I'm gonna drop the affiliate link back into the chat. Um, so that'll just take you to the bare yarns. But you know that whenever there's like a major sale, I always share like some of the smaller sales on Facebook and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can follow me on Chemnitz on Facebook. But uh, whenever there's a really big sale, then I'll come on YouTube and tell you guys about it because yeah, I, well, I am a little bit of a stash enabler and I also really, really love it when you guys start dyeing yarn yourselves. Um, oh! Julia, I totally forgot. Julia just asked, what is that thing that looks like an elephant? Well, it is a bear cotton elephant. <laughs> so, Lucas, my four-year-old, his favorite animal is an elephant. And one of his favorite things to do with mommy is to do Chemnitz videos. So I thought that sometime as a special treat I would, oh and he loves stuffed animals, I would give him this and tell him that we could dye it however he wants. And so um, I thought that, that would be fun. They also have, so they have a kangaroo that has a little joey that fits in its pouch. Um, there's a monkey and there's a penguin, which I love penguins. I got married at an aquarium, had my first dance next to all the penguins. I love penguins, but um, the penguin was out of stock, but also Lucas loves elephants. So good night. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for watching. Yeah. So I can't believe I, this was like the best part and I totally almost forgot to show you guys. Isn't it? It's cute. It's nice and dense. I'm a little worried about getting it wet. Cause it says hand wash only cold water hang to dry. So I'm a little nervous about the actual like dying of it and if it gets saturated and how one would deal with that. Like, am I supposed to like unstuff it and restuff it? Or, no, I wouldn't want to unstuff it. Yeah, so I'm a little nervous about how that would go. Like maybe some of the techniques wouldn't be as great. Maybe I should just let him go nuts with fabric markers or something. But um, you did some solar dyeing in your shed the other week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I need to do some, some dyeing. Yeah, markers, markers might be good, but it would be fun to do like tie dye or something. So I just worry about the like bleeding after, you know, I get, I get annoyed when I have to do a lot of rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. That's my, I think that's my least favorite part of any type of dyeing yarn is when things bleed a lot and I have to rinse it a lot. Um, but yeah, this is my, my haul. <laughs> and I think all these boxes, when I had them stacked, it was almost as tall as me. Um, yeah, fabric paints would probably be a good call. Um, I just wanted to be cuddly. So actually there's some good, yeah, well, I'll figure something out. I mean, I think that this might be... Actually, this might be a really good birthday present for him um, to have that be something for his stuffing coming from somewhere. Oh no, that's more peanut dust. <laughs> Sorry, railing against the peanuts. But anyway, um, yeah, there is the Dharma website has a lot of inspiration. Um, I don't have any affiliate status with them or anything, but um, they, they have lots of like t-shirts and bags and all kinds of stuff that is really, really tempting to play with. Um, 
Uh, yeah, it would be a, it, like if he if he's just using fabric markers, then maybe I wouldn't film it. Like if we were using just permanent markers or something like that. But um, I am hoping to do something with like brushes and dye. So um, yeah, it would probably be a video. If not, it would there would be pictures of it on my Instagram, which is also at Chemnitz. Yeah, it's polyfill. I just I get I get nervous about things being musty. And whatnot. I mean, I think if I kept it with like a fan on it or something, it would be fine. Because at first I was like, oh, just pop it in the wash. And then reading the tag, I'm like, oh, that's why this is only my second Dharma order ever. I'm like, that's why I didn't order this last time. But um, yeah, I think that it'll, it'll be nice. But anyway, I've shown you the nitpicks link a lot of times. And I think, do I have in the video description my, oh, I don't have my Facebook page, but um, there is a Facebook group for fans of Chemnitz. It's called Chemnitz Lab. Um, there's a link in the video description. And it's a community where um, really all kinds of fiber arts, crafts stuff discussion is, is welcome. It's mostly dyeing focused right now. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of more, there's a lot of indie dyers in the group, a lot of home dyers and people who are just starting out. So. Um, I'm, you know, usually checking pretty frequently, but if I'm not there, then someone else might be there to answer the questions. So it's really helpful. Um, yeah, I don't think it's the polyfill that's for the washer. I'm, I wonder if it's because of the stitching or something. I mean, I, I've had to put stuffed animals in the washing machine before when, because with kids, there's times when you need to do that. Um, so I'm sure at some point, cause it would probably end up in the bed. Um, it would need to be washed, but. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll give it a shot. It'll, it'll be fun. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just am not sure what the reasons for it. It might just get lumpy or something, which, you know, happens. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? Oh, yeah, check out the, in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And there's a link just to the shop page in the description. But check out the Hanukkah sampler. Uh, maybe some of the yarns that I unboxed today might be part of that. Um, there's a lot of other ones that I have in my stash. Uh-oh, I lost where the comments are. Are there still things that you have not dyed that you want to try? Oh, yeah. Um, tons, tons of stuff. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, some of the yarns that I opened up today I haven't ever tried before. Um, and then there's all kinds of, like, you know, yak. I'd love to dye yak. Like, there's so many, like, there exists so many things in the world that I would love to colorize, I guess. So there's, there's a lot out there that I would, I would love to try. Um, don't forget to mention my Patreon. Aw, thank you. Yeah. And so actually, um, today I had a few changes come with the Patreon. And I was actually planning, I might film like a, a video specifically to talk about that later in the month to talk about how like all the Patreon stuff works. But um, if you are interested in supporting Chemnitz on a regular basis um, and on a very like personal level, you can sign up and be a patron, um, which is a way that you can contribute to the Chemnitz channel on, you know, a, on a monthly basis. And in exchange, you can get some really fun perks. So all, everyone who contributes to the Patreon can get early access to one new video a month. Um, and this is available at the lowest level. Um, and the early access, the videos do eventually become public because I am committed to providing material for free. But you get early access and you also get to vote and help shape the direction of that video. And the runners up from these polls, um, from these monthly polls actually help shape the direction of a more than just the early access video because you know what all of you want to see is what I want to film and so it's sort of like a nice synergistic um, helps me prioritize things in my queue. Um, other rewards include exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks. Every month I do a live stream while I'm filming a video so you get um, sort of an unfiltered view of what goes on while I'm filming a video, when I have to re-say something, redo a take. Um, when you watch the edited video, you might be like, 
oh, she cut out like a huge section or, or whatnot, or some of the waiting steps in between. And so that is, um, you know, something at, at, that starts at a higher level. You can get advanced notice of Chemnitz Creations shop restocks. So that way when I release something like the Hanukkah sampler, which there, that, that there were more slots. So there's still some available of the Hanukkah sampler. But when I did a, um, a mystery, a mystery dialogue from a live stream that sold out really, really quickly. So having the advanced notice before I promote it means that you might get first dibs on things that come up in the shop. Um, and then at some higher levels, you can get shout outs in the early access video, either um, with your name going across a fiber patron scroll, or you can get a verbal shout out. And then there's also coupons where you can get um, monthly coupons to the, like a basically a permanent coupon to the Chemnitz Creations store. And so then every month I send, I'll send you out a, a new coupon. Um, but the, with the, the shout outs and the coupons, there's a little more details on how like that all works. And you can find all that information on the Chemnitz Patreon page. And there's a link to that in the video description. Um, oh, do you think Chemnitz might go full time in the future? Um, what do you mean by full time? I cannot create 24 hour content. That would be a little, little hard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm basically full time with Chemnitz right now. <laughs> I mean, this this is my employment. Um, I it is not quite a like so. I've my personal story is like a little long, but I had some health issues and. Then we had kids, and so I was staying home with the kids, and Chemnitz was, has been a hobby um, of mine for a long time. And this fall, when we started sending Ryder to school, I decided to go all in, and that's when I did the Kickstarter, and then I started the Patreon and the shop to help, um, yeah, to help try to, I guess, just ramp it up, because it's been um, doing fine, and I've had some income from it from before, but I was trying to, I guess, really lean into it. Um, which is what I, I, yeah, I started doing last fall. Um, and so the plans, um, goodness. So the plans for the rest of the year, that's a, this is a big question. So the pl question is, what plans do you have for the rest of the year and for the coming of next year? Well, Chemnitz is going to turn 10 years old right before uh, the new year. I think the very end of December, like the, the week before New Year's is when I started it. And I haven't quite decided how I'm going to celebrate. We are very likely to have house guests um, during that time. So it's unlikely that I would be able to do some kind of live stream to celebrate. But I'd have to talk with my friends. Maybe, maybe we'd have a little, I'd get all my friends and we'll have a dying party, which would be sort of hilarious, a little frightening. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't decided how, how I'm going to celebrate that. Um, clearly in December, there's going to be the Hanukkah special week, which whether you get the sampler or not, there's going to be eight nights of new dyeing videos in addition to the normal Dye Pot Weekly schedule. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll hit the year of Dye Pot Weekly in October, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, I have way surpassed my goal when I, when I started, I was hoping to do just one video a week and I've been doing two, um, since I think September of last year. So I'm really, really pumped about that. Um, in a couple weeks, it's actually going to be a whole Indigo week. Um, so there will be at least three, four, I think at least six videos featuring Indigo some fail, some wins. Um, um, oh, you thought that I had a day job and Chemnitz was a sideline. Oh, yeah, so um, no, Chemnitz is my day job. Well, that and, I mean, the kids are in school three days a week. Um, so I have that is like Chemnitz time. And then sometimes I'm like frequently doing stuff when I'm with them and they get involved with stuff with just Lucas, he likes, he really likes to watch when I film. So a lot of times there are videos where 
you might see a little hand peek in as I'm washing the yarn because he's standing there very, very quietly when he's, it's not, when it's not a Lucas video, <laughs> he's very, very quiet. But occasionally you can see a hand as he's like trying to peer into what I'm doing, um, which is adorable. But yeah, they, um, my live stream schedule is pretty much like around either when the kids are in bed or when they're at school. Um, so there's that. Um, so yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so for the rest of the year, I mean, I'm not planning on stopping creating videos. Die Put Weekly will be going strong. Um, I'm, you know, looking forward to, I mean, I'm not anywhere near to filming episode 100 yet, but I'm really looking forward to hitting episode 100 and we'll do something to celebrate that. Um, yeah, so I think that that's some of the stuff that is currently like, like publicly in the pipeline. I have a list of other projects that um, that I'm working on, which like includes some rebranding, um, which is like, a, which I don't mind saying because it's a, like, I've been working on a new logo for a while and uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, he, um, he, it's really, really fun to dye yarn with him. Um, it's, it's funny because I think that like people either love it when the kids show up in videos or there's some people who don't love it as much. Um, but of course there's some people who really like the more wacky, like the candy dyeing videos and some people who like the, you know, more traditional techniques. So I think that there's like a, um, big you know spectrum of what people want to see um and and it's and it's a lot of fun but yeah the yeah the chem stuff is like been going going well so i think i underestimated the support that i had in the community and you all continue to awe me with your support and I'm, I'm really really grateful that you are allowing me to do something that I am so passionate about and not only share that with a lot of people but um, also like make a business out of it and so I am very very appreciative appreciative of that um, but I think that you know I never expected when I created my blog mostly as like a notebook for myself that so many people would enjoy it so um, my knitting machine, yeah, that's kind of where it lives. I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> oh, uh, Chemnitz has taken over the whole house. When you say candy, what kind have I tried? Like hard candy or I will not dye yarn with chocolate. That is, there's a few lines. I won't do yogurt <laughs> and I won't do chocolate. Um, I just sort of like as a whim, I took a bunch of leftover Halloween candy, not the non-chocolate ones, but like Skittles and some gummy bears. And um, I think I had some like hard candies and that kind of stuff and threw it in. And the yarn actually came out pretty cool. And since then I've done, I did the candy hearts um, at Valentine's Day and those were awesome. There was way more color in those than I expected. And otherwise I like using sprinkles a lot. Um, but oh yay they made it to the cape oh yeah i didn't even tell you guys uh and if any of you are parents you might understand what this is such an exciting thing i am on my own this weekend <laughs> the this is my little craftcation um i get oh there's a fly um I get the, the house all to myself. I'm gonna work on a quilt that I started in my vacation last year um, and hopefully get the top of that sewn up. And I'm going to have a weekend of self care and me time and it's gonna be really, really awesome. And so, and then of course, the, all my boys come back and then like a couple days later, he has to go out of town. <laughs> so, and then it'll be me and both kids and yeah, uh, for like, five or six days and so that'll be interesting but it'll be it's nice I think that this is like my little like staycation because 
for a long time, Keith was telling me, oh, you should go someplace. Like, I, I travel for work, or he travels to, like, for, like, some other stuff. Um, and he's like, I should, too. And I was like, well, you know, I don't... It's like, the people that I want to go visit, we want to go visit together. And, you know, the... You know, when a lot of my friends have either like really young kids or are pregnant, so it's always been hard. And I was like, you know, what I really want is just a weekend home, just by myself and not having to worry about responsibilities and whatnot. I mean, Indy is here, so I do have a, a being to take care of, my first baby. But yeah, so then last year he was like, okay, so he went and he went to the Cape um, to be with his parents. Um, with the kids and so they'll have like a fun beach weekend and I'm here and it's quiet and I know I'm gonna clean this up because I'm gonna want to start quilting tomorrow or well sewing but I don't have to because no one's gonna come and get into it in the morning it's awesome now I Obviously, I miss the kids dearly, so when I get up in the morning, I'm going to be feeling really sad because I don't get my morning snuggles. Um, uh, Indy's a dog. Um, yeah, whole weekend. Um, uh, oh, the knitting machine. I basically only use the knitting machine to make blanks. Um, I've never, I think that the, with the bigger one, the loops and threads one, it has, it's big enough that you could make a hat from it just in the round but the gauge would be so loose that I like a thick I like a excuse me I like a much tighter gauge on my hats so I wouldn't use it for that um aww, babies <laughs> yeah have a wonderful day or evening or wherever your time zone is <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the ah, uh, it's just eerily quiet right now. <laughs> thought we were about to get a thunderstorm, so I was expecting some thunder or something, but yeah, it's, it'll be nice. Um, and then, well, Keith's going on, like, another, it turns out he's going on another vacation next week. He, well, he's going to go visit his brother, and they're going to have a jolly, jolly time, <laughs> but that's why last weekend I had a weekend with just me and Lucas, because I was like, well, maybe I should get a bonus weekend if you're going out of town again. And we decided, okay, we'll do like one-on-one -on -one with each kid. So that way, like, it's less work <laughs> for both of us because they're best friends, but they really are a lot easier separated. So then Lucas and I had like a mommy Lucas weekend and it was a lot of fun. It was really nice. Like, I feel like he's constrained a lot by like having a younger brother in terms of timing of when we do things and behavioral stuff or like us worrying about a meltdown with the two-year-old and so it was really nice to like we went and hopped on the public transit and went into Boston um and you know riding the T was half of the adventure and that's what he wanted to do and so we did it and it was awesome and really really fun for us to just have a weekend and it really even though we were home it really made it feel like a vacation because like we were just doing all these different kinds of things. And so that was really fun. Um, yeah, I mean, India, actually, there are some indie videos on the channel because way back in the day when it started, I was like, oh, I'll put these up on YouTube. So there are some baby, baby, baby indie videos. Um, there's a playlist. If you go on the main channel page into playlist, there is an indie playlist there. Um, but most of those are, are older. He, right now, he's in the other room. If it weren't so precarious with the, like, the bottles and the yarn, like, down on the floor, then I would bring him over right now. But um, he, he'll make an appearance. Uh, so he makes an appearance occasionally. Um, but, yeah, not today. Um, but, oh, yeah, I'll probably have a, since it's just the two of us, he'll probably be on the Instagram <laughs> this weekend. But, yeah. Oh, and the, not only that, but they decided to go down on a Thursday. So, Indy is seven. Yes? Yes. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> I had to think, because it was like, we got him right after we got married. Um, we actually found him. Um, he was born on my half birthday. 
Um, actually, we technically wanted his sister because she was nicknamed Princess, which was like my nickname when I was a kid, and for my dad, and, like it's like pet name for me, kind of thing. And so it was like, ah. But then she wasn't available. But we wanted a kind of wanted a boy and dog anyway, and. Yeah, we moved to Illinois, and then we got the dog shortly after, and yeah, he's a sweet, sweet, sweet boy to our family, but he hates all strangers. Um, I think he's very, very protective of us, even when we don't need him to be, so uh, yeah, he's, he's a sweet, sweet um, to us <laughs> dog, but yeah, he barks, he barks a lot, and it's not that he's, he's actually pretty submissive as far as dogs go but he alarm barks like pretty seriously and he, he has troubles getting him to stop barking he's an american eskimo um so uh spitz he's 25 pounds but he's like tall um but he's all fluff <laughs> so anyway but yeah thank you guys for joining me tonight this was a really really fun i i really enjoy I guess it's not as much about just like, oh, what's in the boxes as just the whole experience of this. And oh, uh, it's the beginning of the month, so I've got some subscriptions on the way. So I'll have some fun unboxings from like monthly unboxings from some companies. So, I mean, you guys can probably figure out who's going to be sending me some boxes, but I am very, very, very excited to open these up. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, yeah, I, I put links in the chat a lot. But all the other links are in the video description. And I hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I, yeah, I might not be just, I might not be replying to comments as much this weekend, but I am still like, if anyone has any like Etsy questions or anything, like I'll, I'll, I'm always gonna be responding to that, so. Oh, you just took the field. No, he's he's beautiful. He's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful boy. And I look forward to making some of these bandanas. We'll probably end up for him. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, check out all the linkies. Um, have some fun. And yeah, join the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group so you can share your own dying adventures with me and with a lot of the other people that you might see in chat here. And it's just... It's all fun. It's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for joining me. And I will, ooh, new Die Pot Weekly episode tomorrow. So check that out. And I will chat with you guys soon. Good night, everyone.